Hi, this is Duncan for Tech Digest and Shiny Shiny, and I'm here with the ATI Radeon HD 4870X2. Bit of a mouthful, so I prefer to call it the fastest graphics card in the world. It's huge. Look at this. This is massive. It, uh, it takes up two full ports on the back of your computer, one for, the, uh, one for the ventilation and one for your monitor ports. And seriously, when I was installing this, I had to literally remove unnecessary bits from my case to actually fit this in. Um, fitting it in took me about three tries before I got it right. Um, it has two power connecting points, one there and one there. And, uh, and so, I, you know, you, you've really got to have a good power supply to handle this. Uh, when you, uh, if you, if you install it and you don't connect the power properly, then uh, it's quite good. It'll come up with a sort of warning screen, a little splash screen saying you need to connect more power to this, which is, uh, which is pretty good for hardware manufacturers. Most of them don't do that. Um, let me put this down for a second so I don't damage it. Um, <laughs> installing the software for it, the drivers, is uh, it's, it's not a piece of cake. Windows Vista won't automatically recognize it, but it's very simple just to go to the ATI website and, uh, and download the drivers from there. They're very good. Um, when you install it, or my experience of installing it anyway, it took a, quite a while to install, and that's okay, but then uh, the screen just went black at one point and, uh, and it completely stopped doing anything. So what I did is I eventually did a hard reboot, and when I started the computer again, everything worked fine. It was okay. So, a bit weird, but don't panic um, unduly if that does happen to you. <clears throat> My previous card that I had in the computer before testing this one uh, was a NVIDIA 8800 GT which is a, a pretty good mid-market card that's out at the moment. Um, I was using 4 gigabytes of RAM and I've got a Q6600 processor, so that should give you some sort of point of view about uh, the games that I was testing. And the games, they look fantastic. I started out with Crisis because I really wanted to push the limits of this card. I put all the settings on very high, eight times anti-aliasing, and I was running it in 1680 by 1050 resolution. It looked stunning absolutely incredible. You could see all these amazing little details on the trees and the shrubbery and stuff like that in the game. It was running at about 20 to 30 frames a second, which is playable. It wasn't perfectly smooth as much as I'd like, but you can always whack one of these in SLI if you really, really have a lot of money lying around. Um, I also tried it on a couple of other games. On Team Fortress 2, I plumped, pushed all the settings up to maximum and it was much, much, much smoother than the NVIDIA 8800 GT. It was fantastic and I found even my gameplay was improving because of that reason. I also tried it in World of Warcraft. I was getting a few random crashes. It was absolutely perfectly smooth but every thought from my PC would completely lock up and I'd have to do again another hard reboot which is a little bit of a pain. This card is out at the moment. It will cost you about 350 quid but if you're the kind of person who wants the fastest graphics card in the world then this is it. Bye.